Hello everyone and welcome back. Have you guys been enjoying the Prismatic builds lately? They have provided a ton of expertise, strength and uniqueness not seen before until now. But if you had to choose between the strongest solo warlock build using Dawn Chorus and Dragon's Breath, or a Prismatic build using Spill of Apotheus and Star Eaters, which one would you pick? Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section, because personally I've made my mind up already. Today's video will be unleashing the power of the sun with this solar wall of build that will be harnessing the fiery energy of the stars to incinerate your enemies and dominate the battlefield. It has everything you would want and more, so you new free play players better listen up as this build is perfect for you guys specifically. Let's first go over the general aim and exotics we'll be using. Our aim with the build is to make a very powerful solar build that everyone can use and adapt to for whatever content they have in mind. We also need to make sure that our fragments are strong enough to support us, even outside of the use of mods and perks provided. For this, we will be using Dawn Chorus and Dragon's Breath. To start with Dawn Chorus with his exotic effect, Rise of Ember, it states, Your Daybreak projectiles deal more damage and scorch targets on impact. Your Scorch is improved, and you gain a small amount of melee energy when you scorch damage a target. The first line of the exotic requires users to use a specific solo super to maximise the damage, which we can ignore. The second line though is where the build works out the most in, as anything we have available that can scorch will apply this effect to us. This means using a weapon with incandescent or any solar based abilities that can scorch will grant us melee energy back per scorch made. Our second exotic is the Dragon's Breath, with this exotic effect, Composite Propellant, which states, Rockets embed themselves in struck targets and periodically eject incendiary fuel that inflicts scorch. The longer this weapon goes without firing, the more fuel the next rocket contains. This is one of the best solar exotics to have if you have already a good solar secondary to rely on and you want to lean even more heavier into the scorch and the side of things. The following is going to be a great source for getting melee energy back faster from Dawn Chorus, but it's also going to allow us to recover class ability and grenade energy faster via Ember of Sindering and Blistering. A certain combo will cover the three key areas that will be heavily used in the build. For aspects and fragments, you will want the following. Touch of Flame so that fusion grenades can explode twice. Helion, where activating your class ability will grant you solar mortar that lobs flame and projectiles and scorches targets. Ember of Ashes, where you apply more scorch stacks to targets. Ember of Searing, where defeating scorch targets grants melee energy and creates fire sprite. Ember of Sindering, where your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. And Ember of Blistering, where defeating targets with solar ignitions grants you grenade energy. A lot of fragments being used will focus on regenerating three key abilities the build will come you heavily rely on from the get go. A Searing combined with Dawn of Chorus is going to provide a much bigger boost of melee energy upon activation compared to using them on their own or with individual stat buffs. This means you can ignore your strength stats as long as you're proccing the following. A Sindering goes back to the class ability we're using constantly, and Blistering is allowing Touch of Flame and the Grenade of Choice to be more available outside of the realm of ability boosting weapons or mods. Except from Ashes, all of these share the same common theme of relying on Scorch to help bolster their effect. Since everyone can get a weapon that can Scorch, this is the best combo to pick if you want to cover all of your bases. It's also recommended you have the Solar Formation, Radiant Orbs, and Shield Cross Seasonal Mods to enhance the build further, if you wish. For the mods and stats, we have Resilience and Discipline marked as a higher priority within the build. We then have Recovery and Strength also pulling through, but both of these will be supported by Fragments Chosen and their Tier 6 Strength. Resilience at Tier 10 will give us a 30% damage resistance while playing content. There isn't anything specific that needs to be added on, as if you're playing end game, then tier 10 is something everyone should have. Discipline we have ours at tier 10 with a 37 second grenade cooldown using fusion grenades. At this base level, we will be supporting the build further with fire sprite and ember blistering being used. Since this one stat pretty much doesn't need anything else to buff it up, you can then focus your strength elsewhere, such as the examples here. Having an impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% melee buff, Bolstering Detonation times 1 for a 12% class ability buff, Outreach for a 12% melee buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. 
four additional mods we have also applied. Harmonic Siphon, creating orbs of power via matching subclass weapon. Charged Up, which will expand how many charges we can carry once we collect an orb of power. A solar weapon surge times two for a 17% weapon buff. Ashes to assets for super energy regen via grenades. And lastly, Heavy Finder, Reserves and Scavenger Ammo mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are currently using. So as we have covered our Zodic Heavy Weapon, I would then advise you to pick a sewer weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. For primary, I've chosen to use the Perfect Pitch SMG with Incandescent and Substance. The following SMG can be gotten from Zavala this season by everyone, and is worth getting as it can break barrier shields down this season, apply Scorch, and has some pretty good stats across the board which makes it feel very stable to use. Now of course, most players may not want to use an SMG in endgame content because of the lack of range and damage they could apply. So in this case, I would then advise you to use the Apocryphal Integration Hand Cannon, which can be gotten if you have the Lightful DLC. A secondary, we have the Riptide Fusion with Autoloan Holster and Chill Clip. I highly recommend every free-to-play player to grab this from Shax, as it's an absolutely perfect secondary to use and bring wherever you go. Not only is it great against powerful enemies via freezing them, but it's such a reliable weapon to use compared to most secondaries available. Of course, the cool sidearm with Slice and Vorpals is also a great turn to have that will complement the build you have going for it. One of the biggest challenges of building a solo warlord build is finding the right balance between offense and defense. You want to be able to deal damage, but you also want to be able to survive long enough to take down your enemies. It's a delicate balance, and getting it wrong can make all the difference. On top of that, you have to consider the different activities you'll be playing. What works in raids might not work in nightfall, and what works in strike might not work in crucible. You need a build that's versatile, that can adapt to different situations, and can come out on top. But don't worry, I've done the hard work for you, and after hours of testing and experimentation, I've come up with the ultimate solar world build for maximum power. The build is designed to take on any activity Destiny 2 has to offer and come out on top. It's a game changer, and I'm excited to share it with you. At the heart of the build is a combination of armor and mods that focuses on increasing our damage output while providing us with the survivability we need to take on the tougher enemies. We're talking about a mix of high damage weapons, defensive armor mods, and game changing abilities that will give us the edge we need to succeed. One of the key components of the build is our subclass abilities. We're going to be using a combination of abilities that focus on dealing damage while also providing us with sustain and survivability. But the real key to the build's success is the synergy between our armor, mods and abilities. We're talking about a build that's being carefully crafted to work together seamlessly with each component amplifying the others to create a truly powerful setup. It's a build that's designed to take on any activity Destiny 2 has to offer and come out on top. So what makes this Solar War build truly stand up from the best is the way it combines power and survivability in a way that's both flexible and adaptable. The build is designed to be used in a variety of situations and is capable of adapting to whatever the game throws at it, whether you're taking on a raid, a nightfall or the crucible. The build has you got you covered. So if you're tired of struggling with subpar builds and you want to take your gameplay to the next level, then this Solar Warlord build is for you. With this combination of high damage weapons, defenders armor mods, and game changing abilities, it's the perfect setup for anyone looking to dominate in Destiny 2. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. But at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim name for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, I will leave a dim name in the comment section below. I want more stuff like this, then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.